When it comes to adding performance to a diesel engine, many folks look to increase horsepower and speed through the use of a bigger turbocharger or adding to the number of turbochargers on the engine. These decisions ultimately come down to your goal for the truck and what it is you're trying to accomplish. We'll get into some turbocharger theory today in the Amsoil Garage. This video is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Visit amsoil.com for more information. Hey everyone, I'm Greg Jones for Engine Builder, and today we're covering turbochargers and diesel engines. As I mentioned, the type of turbocharger setup that will best suit your truck will depend on your goals. Do you want a reliable hauler or better towing capacity? Do you just want more horsepower? Are you a weekend warrior looking to sled pull or drag race? Or is your goal to go balls to the wall until you blow up your engine? All those goals will change the number and size of turbocharger you put on the engine. Now, before I go any further, we are not telling you to modify your truck in such a way that you violate EPA regulations. That said, you can change the turbo on your truck if you're looking to do so, and there's a number of routes you can take. When it comes to triple turbo setups, those are pretty much reserved for guys looking to make really big power. And even then, many people have found out that a compound turbo setup with the right inlet and outlet can be more controllable and more effective than a triple setup. Triples are hard because you've got one bringing in air and then you're trying to spool another and another. So it's really hard to tune for that incoming air and fuel in the combustion chamber to make power. It's easier to tune compounds because it's one less animal in the circuit and you can still make big power. With all the different size induction wheels and different designs, you can modify your housings to improve flow rates. While compound setups can make big power, the problem with the compound setup is unless one of your chargers is rather small, they don't typically lend themselves to good on-street drivability. They typically have a bunch of horsepower lag, and once boost pressure comes up, they take off like a rocket. That's typically not your street driving scenario. Another option is to put a really big single turbo on your engine. This option will certainly add horsepower, but similar to a compound setup, if you're driving on the street from stoplight to stoplight and through parking lots, the overall functionality is going to be poor because it's going to take a while for it to build boost pressure with such a large turbo. What we're seeing more and more people do, even at the OEM level, is utilizing a set of compounds where one is small to build boost at low throttle and then that builds boost into the bigger charger, which then will build more horsepower at the higher throttle positions. If you're going to stick with a single, you have two routes. You can play in the VGT land, which is variable geometry, and there's a set of vanes in there that help control boost pressure. Or you can go back to the old way of turbocharging and you have a relief valve or blow off valve in the system. There's two ways you can build boost pressure. You can either control the charger and how it builds boost pressure, or you can just relieve some of the pressure that the charger built. That's the two ways to have a single. There's drivability advantages with the VGT because it controls the vanes to build boost pressure at low throttle input. It's what's made today's turbo diesel engines much more throttle responsive on the street at low RPM. You can't do that with a turbocharger that has a blow off valve on it. If you want something for good drivability, you're probably sticking in the land of VGTs. Now some people will tell you bigger is always better and that seems to be the philosophy to a point. If you go to too big of a setup, however, you're just not gonna build power. Unless you're heavy into the throttle because it needs that exhaust to bring in more air, you're gonna be dumping a lot of fuel and it's gonna puke smoke out the rear end. If your air charge doesn't match your fuel charge, whatever comes out the pipe is not gonna be optimal. In addition, depending on where you live, maybe near sea level or at 10,000 feet, the air will be much different and will affect your turbo performance differently. At sea level, there's gobs of air available but at 10,000 feet of elevation, there's not. The turbo that you pick needs to be suited for the typical pressure you're operating in. Again, this also factors into why the VGT has become more popular because you can allow the vanes on the VGT to adjust boost and it's more capable of managing altitude differences. When it comes to turbocharging, there's a lot involved beyond what we've outlined here so if you wanna get deeper into this subject and you wanna talk turbocharging performance or you're interested in buying one, 
The guys at Banks Power, Fleece Performance, or ATS Diesel are all great resources to start. I'm Greg Jones for Engine Builder, and thanks for joining me in the Amsoil Garage.